uh, the fun uh, misses uh, got stuck at work and then I get the little human version of me running around the house. So, um, but anyway, uh, let me pull up. All right, so we have five. Oh, 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 okay. So uh, just in case uh, we have some people here who want last time, um, we basically went over all of the ideas, talked about them in kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, a, a definite lot of detail about uh, different opinions and things. And then I uh, basically put together a summation of the different ideas that we've had in the document. And uh, what I'm about to show you is the results from that, which we don't have a ton of voting on it, but that's okay. We do have a definitive winner and that is all we care about. Um, so <clears throat> the idea was that everyone votes on it and then that one would be the quote unquote game that we're gonna put together. And so what I'm gonna try to do here, which uh, I'll do it very loose, is uh, come up with our first quote unquote feature of the game. And then we'll go through uh, how we want to uh, prioritize uh, those different kinds of features. Like the idea is that we get through a feature and then we may have a backlog of features, uh, but I don't want to get too bogged down uh, with uh, like the super businessy side of it. It's just more of like, how do you scale down the game to get it to that single feature that you want to put together uh, that is achievable in a time frame. So uh, let me share my screen. Where are you? Always on scene. Oh, there you are. Uh, share my screen. All righty. All right. <clears throat> so uh, what you can see from this is that we got a total of five votes. And the votes that won were player loots memory instead of pockets uh, was the summation of that one. And uh, this we've had several kind of talks about this, but uh, basically, we have the overall theme of the game is a memory thief, and now we have what we consider to be our main goal of the game is to uh, loot people's memories instead of pockets. Um, and so with that being said, <clears throat> I'll stop sharing really quick it's because we don't need to share that forever. Where is that? Stop sharing. Um, let me turn my camera on. It's me. Um, so with that being said, uh, typically you do something very, very similar to what we did before with the ideation process, only now you're more narrow and you're at a feature process. Um, but I don't want you guys to feel like you're replicating things over and over again. And so uh, basically what we can do is maybe either use the chat or uh, a, a different mechanism if we want to. Uh, like, so when you think of that, a player that loots memories, what is a... Uh, don't get too much into the story. So that's what's like the biggest problem people have with games when they make small games, they get right into the story and they don't think about what's the game mechanic that we want. And so that's that's what I want us to focus on of a game mechanic. And so like a good example, I'll try to use this as an example is, so I think player steals memories. The first feature that I could think of is that as a player, I'm gonna walk around and if I bump into someone, I steal their memory, right? Like that's a that's a the user facing feature that's a full vertical piece uh, of everything and so that's the kind of stuff when you're thinking about a feature for this game um, mechanic and that's what we want to really want to flush out right now and don't worry about which one we're going to do first because that will that actually does take on the same voting mechanism that you do in the ideation process is you just have a bunch of people put out uh, a feature and so if we have people on here who are willing to. Um, uh, go ahead and type in a feature to the chat channel. And then what we can do, we can organize that uh, um, in, a, in a better way. But I'm just trying to think of a, a good way that you guys will just be free to do that with, of a, of a think of a game mechanic that is related to a player stealing memories from another player. Either another player or, or, or an NPC, doesn't really matter. Um, but <clears throat> one of the ways that I would encourage is to write it is the, uh, the standard little, uh, from a user perspective is what I should say. Uh, user perspective, don't think of it as a programming thing where like, uh, if the collider collect, touches this person, I'm gonna steal this thing from their inventory. Don't think about that. Think about it as a, I'm playing the game and the user interaction that will occur because I do something. Um, does that sound fair to everybody?
and we'll do this for about 10 minutes just to, or at least enough time we have what seven, seven people in here so enough time that you guys can have a think think about what you maybe want to put down Hi, hey Judy, welcome. Um, just because we do have, I want to be respective to people's times because I was, uh, uh, late here. Um, but I'm going to go through what we have written in the, <clears throat> in here so far. And then what we'll do is, uh, take a little bit of, uh, uh, a show of hands kind of vote, uh, in there, um, which one we want to do. Um, but uh, what I will also want to kind of present to you guys a little bit too is a little bit of the annoying nitty gritty that you get a little bit, but just like a very uh, light load of that is how do you write something that's an idea down from a user perspective so that you can really identify what it is that you're trying to achieve? Because that is what's really difficult when you're, especially working by yourself or on a small project, like what is it that, that, that I want to do? Because you always have all these different ideas, but then organizing your thought into a single train so that you can go down that track and hit the, hit the mark. Um, but oh, we got a bunch of stuff now. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we have is stealth hiding. And so what I want to do is maybe, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, Maybe what I can do is kind of um, say, or I'll type in how you would maybe do that in a, a user quote unquote story, and then we can kind of flush it out from there. So um, I'm gonna type it in the chat, but we have a, uh, basically what you do is there's the, uh, the standard, oh, whoopsie, <laughs> whoops, that's not what I wanna type it. Uh, maybe I just share it. I'll do a Google doc, actually, that'll be way easier. No, I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Okay. Do a 
Okay. Let me turn off my dark mode and then I will share. And we'll be able to do this a lot easier. Okie dokie. There we go. All right. So um, uh, we'll say uh, the first one that we see on here um, is stealth hiding. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, so that could be a feature. And then uh, I'm just going to use this as a, as a chance to show an example. And if anyone's ever seen this before and has any comments or things I want to say, go ahead and uh, have at it. But um, usually from a, uh, so in this case, uh, stealth hiding, and I hear that stealth hiding, and I think, oh, we're talking about you as a player hiding from someone else. So uh, you could say as a player, uh, um, uh, and then I want to hide from another player. Um, you could also do the NPC if you wanted to, uh, so that I can, I'm assuming, steal their memories. And what that is, is that's a very traditional uh, user story approach. You don't see people write that down very much for games because it's really typical what you see in like a web app or a, a standard app in general. But games, there is no difference between that uh, and a game. Like that is what you would uh, present yourself with. And then what you can do is this could be either, uh, this could be your user story. And then uh, what you could do is you add tasks as the technical term for it to each one of those. And there could be six or seven tasks that are associated with making that com feature complete. Um, but uh, I'll just go through each one and then we'll uh, kind of uh, um, go from there. Boop, 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 boop. Oh my God, my mouse. Why is it being this way? Uh, and then we have uh, uh, stolen memories to influence others, which is kind of funny, Brady, that you, you said that uh, because that was a very long in uh, conversation last time about that exact mechanic. Uh, and so uh, I'm glad someone else thought of it because that is a cool idea. I do think so. Uh, so in this case, uh, um, as a player, I want to uh, steal memories so that I can give them to other players. And again, those are like super high level things that are not meant to be nitty gritty, but from a user perspective, it's like the whole, uh, as a player of the game, what is gonna happen when this happens? When I do think, oh, memoirs. No, not memoirs. Memoirs. Oop, hello. Um, and then, let's see. Oh my, why is my mouse so bad? All right. Uh, uh, cool. So the next one was uh, uh, memory. Uh, what points? Oh, um, so I might ask Peter to maybe clarify slightly more on this one because I kind of think I get it, but I want to make sure that I don't completely whiff on it. But traveling through memories uh, or warping points associated with stealing memories. Um, what are you thinking on that one? I don't. I, I was just trying to come up with an idea of like a way to maybe fast travel or maybe like a way to go from area to area. I don't know how deep we want to get into making the game or how simple we want it to be, but like maybe instead of like going through a door to enter a new area, you go through a memory to, to gotcha. get to the next place. So like memory, like a memory loading kind of thing. Just like, yeah, I, I get it. Something yep. like that. Cool. Uh, we could do, uh, uh, fast, let's see, fast travel through memory stealing, um, and then uh, as a player. And uh, one thing that you will we'll do eventually do, this is obviously as the game gets bigger, you don't always have to do it from a quote unquote uh, player perspective. Sometimes it could be like as an NPC, as a, a rug, as a memory, whatever it is that you want to do with that, however you want to build it up. 
I'm just going from a player perspective right now because that's what's in my head. But when you're making these kind of uh, feature stories, you really want to think of it from the the as a part is like the perspective of whatever is going to happen, right? Um, and usually in games, you're talking about the player, but doesn't always be that way because there are plenty of things you may want your NPC to do that is a total complete feature add to a game that has nothing to do with the user, right? And so uh, don't don't get stuck on it. it has to be from a player's perspective. Uh, uh, one, two, uh, still memories. And again, I'm going real light with these and we'll get into these better. I just don't want to spend a ton of time going into this because uh, it's very opinionated on story writing uh, so that I can travel from uh, place to place or memory. memory. All right. Uh, alert system. I like this idea a lot. Uh, 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 steal alert memories uh, to avoid being caught. Um, as a player, uh, or so that I can make the other player forget about my previous actions. Um, <clears throat> I like this one too. Uh, puzzle solving memory. Uh, oh, oops. Ah, of course I would do that. Uh, steal the memories through puzzles. As a, Jesus. As a player, I want to uh, 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 oh, <laughs> I think I flip flop my want to so that, but anyway, uh, I want to uh, solve puzzles so that I can steal memories. Um, mm -hmm. uh, players takes memories from another player and PC, but there's a limit. Oh, that's me. <laughs> uh, uh, limit number or uh, limit limit number of memories. Uh, you can steal. Uh, this is just something I said uh, because I, I think uh, having like something like that in the game would be uh, neat to have so that, especially if you like combo that with some kind of alert system. Why is that not doing that? Um, <clears throat> so as a player, I want to limit the number of memories. Oh, I can steal so that I uh, can progress uh, so that I can hmm, have a challenge. That's not what I want. This is where it gets weird. Uh, I want to limit the number of memories I can steal so that I uh, I'm gonna say it can be challenged because I don't know how else to phrase that. You have to uh, choose. Yeah. So that I, okay. Yep. So that I have to choose. Yep. Good job. So that I uh, have to choose which memories to keep. There we go. Thank you, Bray. Um. Stolen memories to upgrade. Oh. Oh, I didn't think about that. I like that. Uh, uh, steal memory for upgrades. Someone wrote it in there. I like that idea a lot. Um, that'd be kind of cool if you think about like, oh man, like my brain's gonna go real far with that one because you could be like, oh, I want to be a ninja, so you like purposely target anyone wearing like the standard ninja uniforms and try to steal their 
their signature moves will become yours. I, I like that idea a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, as a player, I want to steal memories so that I can upgrade my player or my own abilities. Uh, uh, da -da -da. Oh, <laughs> that's a, a good one, Levi. I like that one too. Uh, it's actually a similar vein, but uh, it's very different. Uh, uh, currency in memories. Uh, as a player, I want to so that I can use them as a barter system. I like that. I uh, can lose their own memories to enemies. Let's see. Oh, yep. Um, uh, 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 um, memories can be stolen from you. Uh, uh, as a player, or actually, uh as a i guess player is right but uh as a i'm gonna say nbc uh i want to steal memories so that the player uh loses uh i'm gonna say items is to be really generic but uh but basically loses something uh uh, reverse. I can reveal the memory. Other memories. Oh, uh, like yeah. I'm trying to think of how to type that. Uh, like reverse memory steal. Um, how would you think to phrase that, Brady? Since you don't want to put it, in, I'm trying to think of uh, a good way. Like so, leaving a memory behind. As a player, leaving a memory behind can reveal new memories uh, to steal. Uh, I can, uh, so that new memories can be revealed. Is that roughly right? Sorry, yeah. Uh, oh my god. Reveled, revealed. Why am I not? My, how, what am I spelling that so wrong? Is that right? Am I like just being dumb? Am I, I think I think I'm wrong, but I'm actually right. <laughs> so, uh, cool. All right. All right. <clears throat> so what we have on here is uh, I, I tried to go uh, kind of do two steps in one just here, but basically give you a rough idea of how we write that uh, that that little blurb into something that was like, oh, that's a cool thing. So one of the things you do when you're when you're going on the project, and this is actually a pretty good, decent little chunk of features, is so you consider each one of those as a uh, statements, a feature that you wish to develop in your game, right? Something that you're like, I want to develop this thing. So one of the problems is that uh, at least I've seen, even on bigger projects, doesn't matter the size, it can be small or big, is uh, you grab all these things, you have these great ideas, and then you slap them all on there, and you say, okay, let's go at it. And, and there's no real, like, there's no real understanding of why would I do this or what's the most important thing that you want to do. So um, one of the reasons why I want to do a little bit of a voting thing is because um, this is a good way to do that. You have a development team or a room of stakeholders, whoever it is. I mean, it's really boiled down to the same concept is uh, they go in a room and some uh, someone who's a marketing person says, these are the, the eight or nine features that are going to make us some money, right? We want these to make us some money. And then uh, uh, usually what happens is uh, there's a squabble in the room uh, between, uh, okay, what's the highest priority thing? And uh, in development, especially games and in general, uh, but in software development in particular, you really want to go after that, um, do like a layered approach to that priority. So you always say, hey, what's the like thing that we want to do the most, right? And you put that at the top. And then you have a discussion maybe about how difficult is that thing that we want to do is. Because if it's a high difficulty and high value, it might be the first one that you want to do. But if it's, uh, you know, if you have another one that's a second list that's a high value, 
the low, uh, uh, low difficulty barrier, it might shift it to that easier one. Now that is an incredibly difficult thing to manage as far as like, how do you just really think of difficulty level? And that's really just based on a gut feel for the most part. Right. Especially in a fresh game like this, like there's no, I don't know, like, what are you going to do? But uh, a lot of those times, I think what you could do, you could flush that out by making that story very skinny, which is a number of tasks that are associated with it. Just think of real tiny slice that you want to do with it. Don't, don't get too nuts with it because uh, as you, uh, as you go along, we can do always add another feature that's associated to what you already did. Um, and so you just layer it on top of each other instead of trying to do one giant feature in one, you do the little teeny, teeny part that gets a game working. And um, what I would stress is, you know, having a square on the screen that goes up to something and reacts and says game over, it's a game. It's not, it's not very fun and it's not a marketable game, but it is the game. It is, it is a feature complete piece. Like if that's what you, the action that you want to happen. So uh, I'm just trying to stress that because uh, there's a lot of times uh, that is that is what the biggest problem is, is people come up with a really cool feature of the game and they go so fat with it that they spend, you know, days, weeks, months on that single feature and then lose sight of like, oh, I could have delivered seven of those uh, different ones to get a variety and get the feel for my player base, especially because that's one thing I've learned from software development is that you guaranteed the second you think you have a feature and you put it in front of a user, the response will be totally not what you think it's going to be. Like you, your, your, the user base will be like, this sucks. You're like, oh, I thought this was the greatest thing in the world. And so you don't want to go with a big old fat feature because uh, that is exactly what happens is that all of a sudden you spent months on a single feature and think it's the greatest thing in the world and all the player base says it sucks and no one does anything with it. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so what I would like to do is if, um, take these uh, little one word pieces here. I, um, I wish I could do a better job of like sharing this thing and having it set up, but it's hard to ad hoc something like this, but let's see, can I do it? No, I thought there was a little button that you can push to turn this into a, um, uh, 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 survey monkey, but I'm not seeing it. I guess I'm wrong. Were we planning on having the voting happen now or have the voting happen later? Well, that is a good question, actually, because we're getting close to the end of the time. And I know this sucks because it's super brief and we didn't really get in anything. Um, but uh, yes, we could do that this way. I guess I, uh, I should ask the audience that question. Since we are seven minutes out of our scheduled stop time, uh, is there any objections to doing this now or do you want to wait later um, to do this? It, it doesn't matter because my main goal was to basically flush out a single feature and just basically get that top priority feature, feature done. Uh, not done as far as implemented, but uh, worked out from us as a group and decided on what the number one feature is. That was my goal for this meeting. But if that has to skip to the next one, that's, no, that's not a big issue. So. I was going to say, if we wanted to, to do it now, we could do a uh, quick read through um, and we could use the thumb up feature within Zoom just to just to have something that we could think about uh, prior to the next meeting or survey monkey for next time. So mm -hmm. um, I, we could always just throw a quick vote on that. How about we do raised hands that way we can just keep our hands up while the vote is tallied and then because thumbs up like that like disappears. Ah, good thinking. I love it. <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's fine with me. So oh. shall we shall we cast a quick vote? Uh who wants to uh we'll just say who wants to vote on these tonight? Raise your hand. Should we do that? Sound good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. If we want to vote now, let's raise hands. <laughs> Looks like I'm the only one. <laughs> Jeff, do you know how to raise hand in in Slack or uh, in Zoom? Oh yeah, I forgot. About it. I was I, well, I just ah. thought physically raise my hand. I didn't think about like the digital form of it. Look at you guys and all your software, you you millennials. <laughs> Where the hell is that thing at? Are you a Gen X? 
Uh, I'm the one, whatever, the, uh, uh, well, before Millennials. I'm like right before Millennials. Nah, okay. you're right you're with us. Gen X. Nah, 83, 83, 83 is because they don't count people who didn't have internet uh, are not Ooh. associated with that. <laughs> cool. Uh, anyway, where the hell is this thumbs up thing? Okay, now I'm like really frustrated. Where is this? You can just raise your hand physically. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. It's in reactions. Oh, is that where it is? Oh, it's like below I... all the other ones, yeah. Eh, whatever. We know I raised my hand. Uh, so, three, four. Brian, did you raise your hand? I couldn't see it on your thing. I did. I'm sorry. Did I unclick it? Yeah. yeah, I did. All right. So we technically, what, we have eight people in this meeting, I want to say? Participants. Let me see. Where's the participants? We have nine total, including yourself. Oh, okay. So we oh, so yeah, we got it. Good. All right, cool. Uh, so that that's good. The vote is a majority. Want to go over it now? So that's good. Um, so what we can do, Brian? Do you have a good idea how we could quickly do this on a voting scheme? Um, yeah, uh, kind of as Brady was talking about, what we can do is so if you want to read off the the title on each one we could just ask for whoever votes for it. We can count to three and leave your hand raised if you uh, if you want to vote for it. Cool. And I would say give a five, 10 second delay for people to, to lower their hands or raise their hands and then count who it is and throw the tally on there and we'll move on to the next one. How many times are we voting? Are we just saying like anything that we think should be a higher priority we vote for? Yep. You know There's. I mean? there Yep, you can vote for multiple ones. This isn't one where it's one vote one only. Um, you just vote uh, anyone that you sound that you think sounds cool. Uh, you you vote on, and basically what you what we'll do is the the easy way. I mean, there's a whole bunch of complicated stack stuff you could do to really figure it out. But basically, what I would do is some, whatever has the most votes uh, is the highest priority thing uh, right now. So I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not gonna get like. Again, you can get really crazy with like different ways of like hashing that out, but uh, I think uh, the easiest way is just top vote getter. That's it. So, so think of it that way too, because if you're like, I want to do a mall, and you vote for a mall, and everybody votes for a mall, well, then now you got problems. So, so, so try to uh, uh, vote for what you think would be uh, one of your like top three, since we have enough here. But that that's just more of me. Uh, pushing it so that we don't get into that weird like seven ties and then that we really didn't accomplish anything so um but anyway so yeah but yeah uh so what we'll do is i'll put the little number next to the stealth hiding and then we'll do it based on uh the raise of hands uh thing or bobber sweet oh my can't I, I can get I can get the counts for you, Jeff. Okay. Cool. Then you don't have to worry about it. Are we voting on the first one now? Yes, we are. Cool. So stealth hiding. If you want to vote for that one, raise your hand. All right, looks like we have, after about 10 seconds, three people raising their hand and... All right. There you go. All right. Uh, hands down, everybody in the class. So uh, we'll go with the next one, which is the uh, stolen memories to influence others. Uh, Looks like we have five hands raised. Yep, I'm gonna add mine because I actually like that one too. Um, cool. All right, we're gonna do uh, a fast travel, uh, fast traveling for memory stealing.
Looks like we have three. Three. All right. All right. The next one is steal alert memories to avoid being caught. I'm seeing four votes. All right, I'll add mine because I like that one as well. All right. Uh, steal memory through puzzles. Looks like six, Jeff. Six. All right, cool. And then uh, everybody's second to put their hands down so they don't know anything. Or they can, uh, limit number of memories you can steal. I am seeing zero. You know what? I think that is on purpose because I suggested it. So I'm gonna put one there because I think I think y'all catfishing me here. <laughs> so. To be fair, I mean, I think that would be a pretty easy feature to bring out of retirement too. <laughs> you know what, Brady? No, you know, I'm you're the ringleader of that. I'm sure of it. So uh <laughs> no, uh no, that's fine. Uh, not shocking that uh, one of my ideas got no votes. Uh, so anyway, steal memories for upgrades. <laughs> See in three. All right. I'm gonna add my because I like that one. All right. Uh, currency in memories. C and five, Jeff. All right. I'm gonna put my on there too because I like that as well. Memories can be stolen from you. Looks like the two people with the coolest names here. <laughs> Spelled in the uh, the coolest way too. I for intelligent, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, we we definitely know it wasn't spelled the other way because you know the brain part is definitely missing on one of those. So, oh, <laughs> All right. uh, reverse memory steal. Ain't nobody vote for this one, Brady. Brady. Yeah, I gotta say, I've even changed my own mind about this one. It's kind of we went along. <laughs> it's all right. Sometimes you hit bullseyes, sometimes you miss the board, right? So. <laughs> well, looks like you sabotage it successfully, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my goal was successful. We do one because Brady wrote it down at least. We're always gonna give him one. So, uh, so uh, all right. Um, so what we'll do, so we do have a couple ties, but uh, so basically what you do is we have, uh, the nice thing is, is that we have uh, three clear cut winners, which really tells you that's your first three features that you probably want to implement, right? And so that's that's good. Uh, that's a really small feature set uh, that you have written down. Oh, wait, that's right, I was, I'm sure my screen's not, you probably see all this stuff on the move around. Um, Anyway, and so what we typically do now, uh, or at least that's what I've seen done, is it, basically we're going to add a second one to this one, and now we're going to put the restriction. You cannot vote for multiple ones. You need to pick one. And so we're going to choose between the three sixes that we have on here, 
and uh, you only get one vote uh, now. And so now you're really trying to narrow it down to what that top priority is. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So. Would you, would you mind highlighting them real quick, Jeff? Oh, sure. Uh, I wish I could, I wish there was an easy way to like shift things. And is there like a super slick command to like push those up in uh, Google Docs? So you can highlight the end of the uh, the sentence and copy the line, <laughs> just control V. <laughs> oh, come on! There has to be like a shift, like oh no, damn. Okay, anyway, all right. Well, I'll just do that. We'll we'll do it the the dirty way. <laughs> no, what I can do is this. Does good does this not have like a highlighter function? It does. I just don't know what the button for like how to do that on a Google Doc. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, there's a little highlighter next to the uh, the font color. That's cool. And this little guy? No, to the top. Oh. oh, well, we'll just do this. You're doing good, Jeff. <laughs> We're going to do it this way. All right. Let the old fart do it the old way. <laughs> All right. All righty. So uh, basically, it's the top three here and uh, in no particular order. Um, and what we could do, so you don't have to limit to voting. I guess I should say that really quick, but I'm just going to do that just so that we can have a clear cut winner out of this. Uh, you could technically keep doing round robins. And that's really how, like, uh, I've only been in one of those before, but like, that's how your little marketing people, they pretty much go around the table 16 times until someone decides to give up on one. <laughs> so anyway uh so what we'll do is uh, the show hands again and then uh only vote once so there are stolen memories to influence others what we'll start with seeing two there jeff yeah I actually really like this one too, so I'm gonna add mine. All right, steal memories through puzzles. C in three. <laughs> of course. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> currency and memories. Looks like the last two. Last two? Okay, cool. Yeah. So the good news, this is actually, I, I, I kind of joked about it, of course, there's high, but this is actually a good little lesson. And like, so we did it down. Now we have our top two. So this is where I would encourage us to maybe have a small discussion. We don't want to get in too deep again because we're over time here and I don't want to go too far over. Um, but this is where you really start to like, because you have a definitive tie both times in these situations, and that could be people, investors, that could be stakeholders, that could be marketing people, whatever it is, right? There's a, there's a tie tw twice. And so what you do now is you think about potentially which one is more difficult than the other one, right? Which one is easier to get out than the other? Because what you're really trying to do is say, this is my first feature. I want to get it out the door. Uh, but uh, maybe I now need to prioritize it instead of based on popularity, I say how difficult it would be to do this. Um, and so um, like, for instance, I'll just give myself, uh, I'll give myself an example of this one, what I would say. In this one, I would say, thinking of like a minimal thing, which we haven't written out all the tasks or anything, but stealing memories to influence others is really basically an inventory system that I'm kind of throwing back and forth. And so I think of that as being in exponentially easier to do than puzzles only because I like the puzzles idea. I just, the math that may be behind that, the, the, the how to get the user to interact with that, like there's a whole lot that goes in there to, to, to even a single puzzle, which you could do a really easy one. You could do like a word puzzle too. I mean, like that could be really simple. Um, so it's one of those things where I just think of all the mechanics associated with it. And I think the stolen memory sounds easier to me. But of course, then I say out loud, that, like it could be a, 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 a word puzzle and I'm like, oh, that might actually be not that hard. So, but anyway, um, that's what the kind of discussion that I, that at this point I would do uh from a difficulty point and since that's going to be pretty difficult to like do across a remote zoom thing uh so we have six 
uh, votes each each of these for a three on three. Um, I'm trying to think of a good way to really do that outside of like having a deep discussion about which one we think will be more difficult. So uh, can I can I throw this out there real quick? Sure, so the way that I'm actually looking at these, I was looking at things that that kind of went together and kind of from the game perspective, like what is the mechanic? What are we actually trying to do now? Influencing people could go to a bigger picture, but mm -hmm. then the question really comes down to how do I steal the memories? And that to me comes down to puzzle. So we could make puzzles all day or and but ultimately you're getting something that's going to go to influence others now again the whole why would you influence others to go do something i mean that's that's the deep mechanic that i would go take a look at do you influence others so that you can complete a level in that case the goal of this is just to influence others now how you get to that again could be through the puzzle so i'm looking at that middle tier as being the mechanic of the game uh the mechanic of how this game progression actually happens so the puzzles are all potentially different, but the the influencing others, it's you you do something to steal memory to influence others. So do you steal five memories? Do you steal four memories? You know, we we really don't have that uh, together. But really, I see that first one as being a, a core mechanic that could be built. Fly through the levels now. Make it difficult to actually get those memories. Make it difficult to do something. So that's why I was rolling with that one as kind of the first, because the, again, the puzzles are, to me, it, it feels like an additional thing that we could do on top of it, but those two really do come as a pair. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and take a counterpoint here, because even though I did vote for the salt, steel memories through puzzle, uh, stolen memories to influence others, um, and like to Jeff's point, that is just an, uh, an inventory and then an interaction after which, like that's a point and click adventure game, which is a genre in and of itself. So. That's I, fair. I, feel, I feel like you could do either or, or, or both. copy it that's what happened sorry i'm just trying to organize this in the voting system and it kind of to go off what you were saying brady too uh the the point and click adventure sounds less fun than creating a bunch of puzzles and trying to go through the complexities of that right so kind of from our perspective is it is it more engaging to roll with the puzzles is there a lot more complexity around puzzles than a uh, a click in inventory system i think that that's probably that'd be another reason why maybe i would go with puzzles Yeah, I guess it kind of does go hand in hand where like influencing others is why you want to do the puzzles and like the puzzles are like the gameplay portion of that. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I should phrase it this way. Uh, does anyone feel strongly about one or the other being other than the three things that we've already said from Brady, Brian and I, anyone feel strongly that puzzles are more important than the influence factor or the influence factor is more important puzzles. Uh, so, cause we've heard, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, three for the memories influence others. And I haven't heard anyone really go with puzzles other than they like the mechanic of that being how you steal things. So does anyone feel strongly against that? Yeah, um, I, the way I look at it as we're building it out, you know, the first puzzle we do I mean, these both share the same story, which is we need users to uh, steal memories. And so, uh, and then I see influencing people as being a mechanic within puzzles that mm -hmm. you pick up sometime, you know, as you're going, you learn that. But, you know, in the, in the initial level, you're gonna learn how to steal a memory. It's gonna be a fairly easy puzzle to do to get there. Uh, so unless that first level, you need to influence people to solve that, uh, 
puzzled and that's why I would argue for the puzzles. Yep. Oh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I actually think it's, uh, it's not super cut and dry. <laughs> so, night night, buddy. <laughs> um, hmm. So let me, does, <laughs> Let me see. Do I have a, Brian, do you have a quarter or something on you? <laughs> Sometimes it's been boiled down. Just uh, flick a flick a quarter and say heads or tails, whichever one. I'm I'm not uh, a, like diehard and uh, against either one first. It's more of an opinion. And so, uh, yeah. do we want to call one last vote before we before we do the heads or tails? Yeah, sure. that's fine. Yeah. Forever hold your peace. Not. <laughs> Not hearing any chirps. Uh, so I guess let's vote on, let's just do the same thing. Uh, so influence others, all four, raise your hand. It's like we got two. I'm so torn. I don't know. I'm a, maybe that's what I'll do because I don't care. I'm going to leave my vote out. There we go. And then it will be guaranteed to get a winner. Then puzzle. Well, then the, yeah, puzzle. So, or sorry, we'll do three. So, okay, cool. That's no problem. That makes it easy. That way we don't have to do too much of the uh, back and forth since I have uh, a neutral uh neutral care in this situation so i'll be there cool all right so what we've uh so what i'm gonna do uh is we do have a i put it on the i guess also a question is are we all discord or slack people on here because i know we have two channels and that can that's a little uh difficult but it's not a problem maybe we can post both of them but my reason for asking that question is how many people know about the github repository that we have on there. We do have a link in both those channels. And what I'm gonna do is uh, basically uh, put some stories on there for this and basically throw all these on there. And then we'll make, I'll make them in the priority order of the backlog uh, of how, what we have on here. So what you see on the screen here with the 666555, all that kind of stuff, I'll just put them on that exact order in the backlog. Um, and then what we can do is uh, next time, because I don't want to get too nitty gritty, I want to start like getting our hands and like making something. But I really want us to then uh, take that highest priority thing, and that's the only thing we're going to focus in on. And we will bust out uh, that full fleshed user story with all the tasks that we want associated, and how we would come to uh, what we would call a feature complete uh, story. And all those tasks are, are things that we want to do. And what we'll do is. Uh, the next month after we have all those tasks written out, we'll have that those done. And uh, hopefully what we'll have in a month, we'll, we'll build a game and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, obviously next time too, maybe think about what game engine you want to do it in, what language you want to do it in from a programming point of view. And then maybe from an artist point of view or or uh, even, because I know Peter does sound stuff, right? For, for things like, like what do you, what do you want to use and things like that? Uh, and what are the downfalls of like, hey, we have, you know, Maybe we have two, three artists who all like Blender. Okay, well, we'll do, we'll make some stories based on that or whatever. Not that it has to be that way, but the point is, is like, um, get an idea of what you're gonna, what you're gonna make it in is essentially what I'm, I'm hinting at. Because uh, game engine wise, I mean, you have Unreal, you have Unity, you have uh, a whole bunch of JavaScripty things. You have there's just a ton of stuff you can use. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, we already know what my pitch would be, so I'll, I'll keep my mouth quiet on that uh, Ruby. For, until then. Yeah, Ruby on Rails. So let's do that. Uh, but uh, I mean, there probably is a. Was there even a game engine in Ruby? It's like, no way. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, but that's kind of stuff uh, that we talked about. And so what I, I might do is um, uh, do a little research for you guys because I feel like I didn't give uh, much prep and I want to give a little bit better prep for next time. And I'll give us maybe uh, four game engine of choices that are free, for instance. And then we can just pick one, uh, whatever. And I'll pick four different languages, hopefully, that I can find with those. Um, and then that way we can kind of get working on there. Um, and I'll kind of give you a little blib 
on why uh, one is better than the other or uh, what benefits they have uh, to it. So, but obviously we'll try to keep everything free. Um, and that repository is definitely meant when we make it and have it all these things put in there, that is totally meant for you during that month, month to month meeting, uh, pick up whatever you want and, and complete it and add it to that repository, do a pull request. I'm more than well, uh, happy to, to, to do code review or whatever it is. Uh, you might not want me to uh, be the artwork review person because I'll just say, cool, because <laughs> I, I don't know much better. <laughs> but but, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but I, I can help with that as much as I, as I can because um, I really want us to get a good feel of like a, a project flow and feel accomplishment of, of making something because I think this is a cool idea. I really do. So. And I want to throw something out there real quick. Uh, can you raise your hand quick if you're not familiar with GitHub or how to use uh, use Git? Okay. I plan on doing uh, a little workshop or something so that we can we can get familiarized with using Git and. Uh, for some reason, I thought that we had something on our monthly meeting, but I think I'm going to pitch it as just a one-off meeting. So look for something in the next couple weeks. Um, I will try and have it, uh, try and have the session going before our, uh, before or right around the same time as this next meeting uh, for Make a Game. So at least by the time that we're, we're, after well, by the time that uh, you know we finish the next make a game, you guys will at least be familiarized with it, um, or anybody who's interested in, in checking it out. So, yeah. Anyways, I also posted some videos about uh, Git. I believe I posted them in both Slack and Discord. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, yeah, look out for that invite. Yep. Also, if you go to the link, just so you know, uh, we're gonna be keep updating the documentation. Uh, every time we have one of these meetings. So if you were curious what happened in the previous meetings, uh, there's a small summary there for each one on the GitHub uh, page of what we're doing. And so the same thing, I'll put it up probably this evening or tomorrow, uh, a little blurb about what we did so that uh, uh, everyone is welcome to jump right in, just read the synopsis if you're not familiar with what we're doing. So, cool. Thank you guys very much. Uh, I do apologize for the late start. That was uh, uh, hopefully not a reoccurring thing on Thursdays. I, I'm <laughs> crossing my fingers that that is not something that happens on a regular basis. So, uh, but yeah, uh, also uh, either one of those channels, a Slack channel, Discord channel, um, feel free to uh, uh, chirp away what you'd like and don't like because there's uh, we can't get better unless we get uh, uh, feedback. So. Fire away. No feelings will be hurt. Mm -hmm. cool. All righty, guys. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.